Hey everyone! So, my buddy is selling his MAN. It's the truck you've seen on here a couple of times. We've been using it to haul vehicles around and stuff like that. But he's at a point where he just needs something else and that's all fair. But it did get me thinking, well, shoot, I'm gonna need something else to do the heavy hauling around here. And when I say heavy hauling, I don't mean 18-wheeler, 30-ton loads and stuff like that. I just mean something that will comfortably tow these heavier vehicles for longer distances. Because if we don't have the MAN available, the best I can really do is my Humvee with my trailer on it. But this setup does have its limits, mostly legal limits, because the maximum weight that I can tow with this setup is just around 2 tons. And most of my vehicles weigh just a little bit more than that. And now some of you are probably already thinking, well, why don't I just buy his MAN? Well, I would, honestly. It is a nice truck, I do like it, but I do want some things that that truck just does not have, or maybe even has too much of. So first off, I want something with a slightly longer bed, because the bed on his MAN is just over 3 meters, and it, it's just not quite long enough to really fit anything at all. And the other thing is the load height on that bed. I want something that is a little bit closer to the ground because it is a really long way up on his MAN. So if we were to try and get vehicles and stuff up there, it would just end up being a really sketchy setup. But I do still want something that has at least four wheel drive because I'm just not always on the road. It has to be big enough to carry the things that I want without being too big. I want it to have PTOs and possibilities for extra equipment. That would be really nice. And also it has to be old enough that I can have it on a classic registration because otherwise it's just way too expensive to have these kinds of vehicles around here. And most importantly, it has to be something that is cool and interesting. So I haven't really been looking for anything specific. I've just sort of kept my eye out to see what's out there and something showed up and I ended up buying it more or less unseen. So let's go ahead and check this thing out and bring it home. All right, people, here it is. An old East German IFA W50. This one probably only has a million miles on it and very few rust holes. I'm just kidding. It's that one. This here is a Magyar's Deutz FM170 D11 FA. But we can talk a whole lot more about this thing once we get it back to my place. For now, we have to get it prepped, because this thing has not moved in a really long time. And last time, from what I know, it was ran out of diesel, so I think we're gonna have to bleed it for air as well. <laughs> it's parked a little bit close back here. <laughs> They did also tell us that the batteries were dead, and uh, I can believe that. Uh, they looked very old, and there was absolutely no power. So, uh, good thing we brought our own. Let's see what happens. Does sound like it has some air in it. That's it. 
Well, I can see we do have a little air bubble in here, so it was definitely run out. But, uh, the filters look pretty new, so I don't think this is going to be that much of a problem. Or is it? Kind of feels like this is pulling a vacuum. That's a bit odd. Took this hose off to see if it was something blocked in the tank, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. Let's just check the other side here, see what's going on. Nope. There's no pressure or vacuum in that one. Hmm. Might just be the pump itself. Looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. Definitely the right size for this. Jeg kan ikke rigtig få noget diesel til den. Det kan vi nu. Der var den. I don't even know if that's the right way to shut it off, but it works. Anyway, we got this thing going. I had a little bit of trouble with the clutch. It was sticking a bit, but I got it to let go. The gears seem to be working fine. The brakes seem to be working fine. So I don't think there's a whole lot left to do. I guess we just got to bring this thing home. We have a little under 200 kilometers to go. So let's just slap on the temporary license plates and hit the road and see how this goes.
Well, so far, this thing is doing pretty well. <laughs> I like the way it feels. It's, it seems to be nice and easy to drive. Everything's as responsive as you would expect in an old vehicle like this. There is a little thing. It, it feels like I can't quite give it full throttle. It's like it just hits a wall and it won't bring the revs up any higher. I don't really know what's up with that. And I don't think there's anything on that shouldn't be. It doesn't feel like we're stuck in low gear or anything like that. It just feels like it's not revving high enough. So I do have to be a bit early on my gear changes and that means it is struggling a little bit, especially when we're going uphill. So there's something to check out. But we are gonna be staying off the highway. I did plan to do that anyway because I don't know this vehicle if there are any kind of issues. I don't really wanna be stuck on the shoulder of the highway. And now that I know that it is gonna to struggle to keep the speed, I definitely don't wanna go out there anyway. So we're just gonna take the country roads. That way if there are any issues, we can just pull over and we won't be in anyone's way, hopefully. <laughs> Well, we did only fill it with 50 liters and I have no idea how much this thing uses. So we just stopped to fill it up all the way and uh, so far it's going pretty good. So let's keep going. So, several hours later, here we are. And we made it just before we ran completely out of daylight, which is a really good thing because we found out I didn't have any driving lights or low beam headlights. So for this last bit of driving, I had to drive with my high beams on. And well, the oncoming traffic was not terribly impressed with that. So anyway, we're gonna wait till tomorrow where we have some more daylight and we'll take a closer look at this thing, see what I actually got here. Well, it ended up being a couple of days later, but here it is, the Magus Deutz 170D11. And those numbers mean that it is a 170 horsepower engine and an 11 ton truck. Now that doesn't mean that this thing weighs 11 ton, that refers to the total weight of the vehicle, so the combined weight of the vehicle itself and its load capacity. So what exactly is a Magus Deutz? Magus is a really old truck company and they have always been focused on making these types of fire truck, utility, rescue type vehicles. And they're actually one of the biggest manufacturers of these types of vehicles. And they do still exist to this day, although they are owned by Iveco now. And although the Magus name still exists, at the time they were bought out was right around the years where they were making these trucks. So you are able to find some vehicles that look almost exactly like this, only with an Iveco logo on the front. And there's even a few things on the inside of this that say Iveco as well. And as for the Deutz part of the name, back in the day they were one company where Magius was sort of the truck side of things and Deutz was more like the engine side of things. 
And really, that's pretty much how it stayed even when they were split up. And Deutsch still exists to this day as an engine manufacturer. And this one has a pretty nice air-cooled V6 Deutsch engine. So this truck is from 1985 and it came from Germany where it belonged to something called the THW. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you can barely make out where those big white letters would have been on the front. And that is short for the Technische Hilfwerke, which is sort of the German emergency service or more like the disaster relief. So these are the guys with all the cool tools that show up to help out when things get serious. But it turns out there wasn't a whole lot of disasters going on in Germany in the 80s because uh, this thing has only done 46,000 kilometers. And because this was an emergency type vehicle, it comes with all the cool stuff like four wheel drive, low range gears, a diff lock on the rear, hydraulic system powered by the PTO, and a huge winch that you can use both at the back and at the front. Now, it was a bit of an unusual way that I ended up buying this thing, because I was already looking for possibly getting a Magyar's truck, but I was actually looking for a Magyar's 168. The Danish army had a bunch of those things, and I also managed to find a couple of them for sale. But I was a bit hesitant on pulling the trigger on one of those things, because, well, even though I think they are very cool, they are also huge trucks. And even though I don't mind huge trucks, I just don't think it would work out terribly well for what I had in mind. Not only is the load height or the height of the bed is almost double of what it is on this thing, but also with such a big truck comes some really big expenses. Just something as simple as buying a new set of tires from one of those, which they always need, it would end up costing me almost double of what I paid for this entire thing. So while I was looking around and considering one of those, this thing suddenly showed up at auction and I was looking at it thinking, well, you know, this might just be it. So I started bidding on this, but I had a maximum set in my head of what I wanted to pay for this and I stuck with that. But that means it never met the reserve price at the auction, so there was no sale. And honestly, I kind of forgot about it, but then Several weeks later, this thing suddenly showed up on Facebook Marketplace for exactly the price of what I had bid at the auction. So I figured, well, I had kind of already allocated the money for this thing, so uh, I just hit up the guy and told him, well, I want to buy it. And on top of that, when I got there, we haggled a bit, so I ended up paying a little bit less than I would have done at the auction. And the guy who was selling it got a little bit more because he didn't have to pay auction fees. So it ended up being a win-win for both of us. Now, some of you are probably already thinking, well, that's great, but what are you going to load on this thing? <laughs> and I guess that's a fair question, but I am gonna get rid of this whole box on the back and just turn this into a flatbed or maybe even a ramp type bed. I haven't really decided yet. There's some pros and cons to both, so I'm gonna have to do some more thinking on that. But I am gonna get rid of this whole box because I just really don't have any use for it. Even though it is a bit of a shame because it's actually a really nice and very well-built utility box. So I guess we can just take a closer look at that. So these just roll up as you would expect. But what I think is really cool is the way they made these sides here. Because they don't just fold down. Instead, they become some nice big platforms that you can get onto, making it really easy to reach all the stuff you got in here. Although it has been emptied out, so there's nothing in here. And even in here, it's really well made where everything is secured with some type of latch. So nothing is just rattling around and falling out when you're driving along. Even have a little fold out light so you can see what you're doing out here. And even the wooden boxes have some specially made latches, so they're not gonna slide out. And it's the same thing back here where the rear hatch becomes this nice big step, making it really easy to get in and out of here. Although I don't really think they had people running in and out of this thing, but they probably had some longer stuff stored in here. Also, nice little fold down ladder. So 
pretty easy to get on top in case you have stuff up there. So yeah, overall pretty well made and well thought out, as you would come to expect from German vehicles of that time. But as I mentioned, I just really don't have any use for all of this. I'm just not carrying the kind of stuff that you would have in a box like this. Although I do think it would be a shame to scrap this because it really is in quite good condition. I mean, it does have a few places where some trim is coming loose and a little bit of rust in some corners and a few dents and scratches, but overall it's in really good condition. So I guess if anyone is looking for something like this, this uh, box is going to be up for sale because uh, I'm probably not going to be using it. So I gotta admit, one of the things that really sold me on this is that double cab. You just don't see this very often anymore. And I'm not sure what it is about it, but I've just always liked a double cab. Whether that be on old Land Rovers or Toyota Hiluxes or Unimox or Tatras, I just think this looks really cool. So let's go ahead and have a look inside. You know, let's just get in the back first. That's probably gonna be easier to film. There's a joke in there somewhere. Oh yeah, that is the, uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. That's the lid for this, uh, I assume it's a jerry can holder, but that thing just wouldn't stay closed. So we just took it off and threw it in there to avoid ripping it off at some point. So battery box right here under the passenger seat with a NATO style jumper cable connector. Let's see if we can just get this down. There we go. So this is a crew cab type. Means you have seating for, I think, four people back here, probably four. And you have seating for another three up front. And yeah, let's just address the elephant in the room. This roof up here. All of this stuff is just coming down. It's some masonite type plates in here and they just deform over time so they no longer fit in this aluminium trim and all of it is just falling down. So I'm gonna have to take all this stuff out so we can make something that looks a little bit more nice in here. Just a funny little detail, but just something like these windows, there's a little twist knob here to open and close them. <laughs> That's pretty neat. I've never seen that before. As cool as it is to have those seats in there, unfortunately, with the type of registration this truck is gonna have, I am not allowed to have rear seating, so those things have to go. But that means I'm gonna have this whole rear section to do whatever, for extra storage, or maybe even a sleeping compartment for those long trips. Right, driver's side. Now, this vehicle did not come directly from the THW. This has been in civilian ownership for a short while, although not registered. But overall, it is mostly cosmetic stuff that's wrong in here. Everything else is in pretty good shape. Now, I did find a few issues when we were driving this home, even though the drive itself went better than I feared. Actually, there really wasn't a whole lot going on on the way home, but I did find a few issues. There's a couple of little electrical things that should be easy enough to sort out. And also, I'm not entirely sure how to work all of this. I assume this stuff is for the transfer case because it says Straße right here, meaning road. So I can only assume that this is off-road. And it's only a guess, but I think this is for the diff lock in the rear. But all of this stuff is not really doing anything. And I'm guessing, well, it is letting air through, so I'm guessing it's just the cylinders on the other end that are simply just stuck from never really being used. I don't think this truck has done much off-roading in its life. But the biggest issue I had was that I just can't seem to give the engine enough throttle. It seems to stop at around halfway, even if I put the pedal all the way to the floor. It's just building RPM to a certain point and it just stops at that. Let me fire it up to show you what I mean. Alright, so I've just given this thing a minute or two to warm up, so now I'm just gonna put my foot to the floor and uh, listen to this. That is full throttle. 
Now, I don't have an RPM gauge, but it sounds like it's only doing you know, 1500 RPM or somewhere around there. And I would say an engine of this type should at least do 2500 RPM at max. So something is limiting this engine, either on the engine itself or something is up with this whole throttle linkage. And I'm leaning towards that because this throttle feels really weird. And it's also sticking a bit. If I push it down a bit and let go slowly, it keeps some of the RPM. I sort of have to help it back up. I haven't looked into it a whole lot, but I had a quick look and it seems to be a whole lot of different levers and linkages and maybe even cables running from here to the engine. So something might be up with that. And there's also a hand throttle that is operating a cable and that cable doesn't seem to sit right either. So I think it's something going on with that. I don't think it's the engine itself because honestly, it sounds very healthy. Actually, I found out there is a stop button right here. At first, I was just using the hand throttle, pushing that all the way over, and that worked. I mean, it shut it off, but uh, once it has air pressure, you just hit this, and that's it. <laughs> so, I was doing it wrong for the first part. Oh, and by the way, I would have liked to try out that uh, PTO hydraulic system, so I could show you that winch in action, but the button to activate the PTO is this one, and it is completely stuck. And uh, I think I figured out why, because the bottom side of that valve is just in here, inside the wheel arch, so <laughs> it's pretty badly rusted. Now, unfortunately, the biggest problem that this truck has is not something mechanical. It is the paperwork. Because this was never registered here, there are no local records of this thing, and unfortunately, the German papers have been lost. So all that remains is a simple photocopy of one half of the registration papers, and that is simply not enough to register this here. So I am going to have to get in touch with some authorities to figure out how I'm going to go about this. And I may end up having to contact the German automotive authorities in some way to figure out if they can help. Or I may even have to contact the last registered owners, which were the THW or the Technische Hilfwerke. But I'm not really sure how I'm going to get in touch with them regarding something like this. But if I can, they may be able to request some new papers on my behalf. But really, this all means that at the moment, it's all a bit up in the air because really it's currently depending on other people and their willingness to help me out with this. But this truck was cheap enough that I was willing to take that chance. But honestly, this should be possible. I'm just gonna have to figure out how to go about it. Well, maybe having this box on it is not such a bad thing after all, because this is quite a cool place to hang out. But even if I get rid of this thing, I have a huge roof on the cab of this that I can play around with. And I was thinking, wouldn't it look really cool if I put an enormous roof rack on this? I do have a bunch of ideas for this truck, but I'm not going to start working on it until I'm sure that I can get it road registered. Because if not, I would just be wasting all my time and effort. But do let me know what you think of this vehicle. Oh, and yeah, by the way, this was the one that I was asking you to guess in one of the last few videos. And I gotta say, I am really impressed. Not only was there some very interesting guesses, but a few of you knew almost exactly what this was just from seeing that little bit of the interior. That's really impressive. So thank you all for watching along and I'll see you in the next one.